um, so you guys don't make the same mistake and hire the wrong person because that'll, you know, I mean, that'll be shit. That'll be a three to six month setback. You hire the wrong person. It'll it'll take you three to six months just to, for it not to work out. And finally they go their way or you let them go or whatever, you know, it's, you know, nothing more frustrating than hiring somebody and then it not working out. That's why you have to be really good and understand, you know, who you're looking for and be very diligent with what you're doing because it's it's your people that are going to make your business so that's going to be a, i already talked with you i said that's going to be another big hurdle your upcoming hurdles you know that's we'll check your flow up but after you got your patient education down and we look at all your flow the next hurdle is going to be your staff you know some staff that can actually do what we want them to do So, uh, you know, make sure you're familiar with the response the primary responsibilities that we want. Make sure you're familiar with personality profiles. That's the number one thing that'll make or break the employee right there. You, you hiring somebody that does not naturally have the ability to do the job you want them to do. That's where, you know, 80% of the chiropractors go wrong. Uh, especially when you go to the marketing person. You got to pick that marketing person good because it's it's a it's a little more of a confrontational um, it's a little more of a confrontational job. So you can't you know you can't piss, pick a passive phlegmatic week or something like that. I mean you got to you know picking learning how to pick good employees. Unfortunately. You know, I can give you all the guidelines and this and help narrow it and all this, but sometimes you just have to go through a few to understand the mistakes you make so you don't do them again. You have to kind of experience it, which is which is bad because that takes a lot of time and effort. Hey, Paul, I want to appreciate you going over with me on that when the employee that I was trying to hire and looking at that, I didn't end up hiring. Just so happened I met her husband in the gym and she's 100% not a candidate for what we were trying to put her in. And he agreed. And, and it, like, you were 100% right on that one. I appreciate it. I forget what the issue was with her. She did, she wasn't uh, melancholy or, or uh, choleric for the front desk. And so you were like, no. Um, and her, I showed you the test score that she did. Yeah. And it was just, you were like, nope. <laughs> yeah, and that one's real important because that's your anchor. Right, right. I mean, that that front desk person is the quarterback. Yeah. So. That's the anchor of, to your office. I mean, you cannot make a bad decision. You, Dan and Trevor, you've already seen that. You guys made bad decision. And look at the shit you're dealing with. Yeah, I, that's why I said something because I know these guys are in there and I'm like, by all means, uh, it is true what he's talking about in terms of that. Yeah, just so make sure you just go, watch the videos, understand the parameters, you know, what exactly we're looking for and why, uh, and that'll help tremendously. And then, you know, when you're interviewing, talk with me about it, about all these factors, and I'll kind of shine, you know, I'll shine some experience on you, you know, pros and cons of, but man, you gotta, that first employee is an anchor. That's, I mean, you really need two good anchors in a chiropractic office. If you only, if you got two, the rest of them don't matter because the front, the front anchor takes care of the administrative and the second anchor in the back takes care of the clinical. And then from there, it doesn't matter as much. You can, you know, pick passive phlegmatic or this or that, or, a lot of times, all you need to do is hire a part-time uh, person during the main hours, you know, like a college kid or high school kid, and have them just come in during the main hours three days a week. And with two full-time people and a part-time person coming in during the main hours, one chiropractor that's really efficient, that has their systems down really good, they can easily see, well, most chiropractors can typically, remember I said emotionally, and physically only see about 200 visits a week. 
And that's when you're on the top of your game. Um, so I'd, I'd say most chiropractors are down around 175, 180. But usually 180 to 220 visits a week if you're really efficient with good staff. And then you have a really high profit machine. You know, you're seeing 200 a week, give or take. And then get your dollar per visit up to about 75. It doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be 100, 150. But go ahead and do the math. You see uh, 180 visits a week at a $75 per visit. That's some serious profit, especially with our overhead. When we, when we learn how to control our overhead, our overhead's only 38%. So our overhead's not 50 or 70%, it's 30. So we have, a, we have a nice profit margin. I remember I used to work only one out of four weeks in the month. Only one week was for overhead. Three of the week. You know what that's like? When you collect enough money in the first two or three or four days, that totally covers your overhead of the month. And then the rest of the month, all the money coming in is profit. You know what that feels like? That's, that's some low stress right there, buddy. And then I'll talk with these guys that are, you know, that are doing a million dollars a year and, and their uh, overhead is the first three weeks of the year. So, you know, their overhead's outrageous with all the stuff they got going. So, um, yeah, these are all things to be worked on and, you know, increasing your skill level. And uh, it's never ending. Of course, in the beginning, if you pay a lot more attention to it in the beginning, you can get through it quicker than dragging it out. 